Uh, video and sound are great. Okay, cool. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get started with episode six of The Chosen. I have the volume set up all the way, all the way up, all the way. And I'll try to, I'll try to speak lower so you can hear the, the reaction louder than my voice. But uh, here we go. Here uh, we go. I'm excited for these guitar lessons that are coming up next Monday. So I'm like, I have so much, so much to teach you all. All right, here we go. This is Le Chosen Angel Studios. Shout out to Angel Studios and the wonderful staff over there at uh, Angel Studios. And what is this? Fish, loaves and fish, loaves and fishes. Shout out to Dallas Jenkins for the fever hasn't broken allowing yet. us to do this. Five days. He will heal. He always does. And what if our oldest son doesn't heal? Hmm? That is why I must teach Abiathar how to make the showbread today. Now, our family share in the secret traditions of Aaron's priestly lineage will be damaged yes, otherwise. Yes, Yafa. I'm aware. <laughs> it's yet one more in a never-ending string of fun curses. You... Always thinking in catastrophes. And you, always thinking it's another sunny day. <laughs> Send for the boy. Twelve cakes, one for each of the tribes of Israel. But if the bread is still here, why didn't God eat the Abba? God doesn't need food. It's called the bread of the presence because it's a reminder of his presence in our lives. A symbol mm. that he sits at our table, dwells in our midst. What happens to the old bread? In the law of Moses, it was written that Aaron and his son shall eat it in a holy place, since it is for him the most holy portion of Adonai's food offerings, a perpetual due. I always wonder where you and Sabo went every Shabbat. Yes, <laughs> we come here to eat the bread that has been removed, provided neither of us had lain with his wife that morning. Don't you leave with him every night, Abba? <laughs> <laughs> so innocent. That is a discussion for another time. <laughs> for now, we must replace this with the hot bread as an offering to Adonai. Reuben. Simeon. Levi. Judah. Himalek. Abiathar, go home. Tell your mother I sent you and that everything's going to be fine. <laughs> Listen, I are you alone. Where is your protection? The king has sent me on a mission. It's so that no one is to know anything about it. I've arranged to meet my men at a certain place. David, it's my understanding. You and the king are not on friendly terms. I've been sent on a mission from the king. Please, I haven't eaten in days. And I know my men haven't either. They're in hiding. We could make do with five loaves of bread, anything. I have no ordinary bread. What about that? That was replaced by the hot but bread. But it's still holy bread. You know the law, Moses. And I know the Pequok Nefesh. Have the men kept themselves from women? Truly, they have. And always, they've been in hiding at Gebir, waiting for me for days. You must be quick. So remember, what I'm about to give you is sacred. Life is more sacred than bread. If Saul finds out I helped you, you won't get to keep mine. I know. And I'm not sorry. Mm. Something is going to come through you. I can feel it. Something bigger, more exciting. I don't know what. There was nothing bigger or more exciting than that giant. We'll see. All right. So I take it this is David and Goliath, David? Come on, familia. Clap with me. Shout out. All these wonderful actors who have done such an excellent job so far playing these characters really portraying these characters I'm so glad that that was very subtle like that giant like it wasn't like some some shows who gave you information and they kind of force it on you it's like it doesn't come natural That's a fish. Yeah, looks on it. Very creative with the emoji there. Wow. 
Come on, let's go. Let's do these. Sister Caroline, welcome to the live chat. We have a new player. <laughs> Just entered the game. Oh, he's eating hay. <laughs> Matthew? Is this where Hit the Hay comes from? <laughs> it probably does. Are you hungry? What did you do to yourself? Oh. 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 It's Ugh. disgusting. <clears throat> did you not put down new hay before lying down? No, did you? Of course I did. <laughs> My mind is racing. I guess I wasn't paying attention. We split up today. We'll be able to cover more ground. We're not splitting up. It would be more logical. Jesus wants you back in one piece. It would be you more logical. Breakfast? No, I asked if you were hungry. Do you know how to make eggs? No. Boil water? Put the eggs in the water. No, 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 no. What is it? Well, I'm not the cook, for starters. Neither am I. But we must sustain ourselves. While you make eggs however you like them, you can also devise our plan for the day with me. <laughs> I'm sure he loves that. Fine. <laughs> you know, we may have to consider the possibility that she went somewhere other than Jericho. Ephraim or Bethel? No. Too much wilderness to cross between camp and either of those places. She's most comfortable in cities. I think she's still here. I do. We must analyze her history what she normally does. Lately, before this, all she did was study Torah with you and Rama. I checked the synagogue. The officials said they hadn't seen her. How did you describe her? How would you? <laughs> She's got black hair. Long black hair. Oh, well, all our women have long. Sometimes she can't even cover it all. <laughs> oh? She might be inconsolable. Of distressed. Anything else? <laughs> Unusually pleasant to look at. You want to add water to the pot before it heats up. Uh oh. Okay, Matthew. Uh, you all right? Just another night of the nomad. The nomad. I can't believe I made it up the stairs. Dionysus carried me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. Pause off, rat. Aladdin? <laughs> Straight anyway, rat. Where were we? Oh, yeah, you gave a description of Mary to the official. What did he say about the stairs? What flowers can you eat? Rose, borage, dandelion. A little tangy, but who's going to complain? <laughs> How do you know so much about edible flowers? My family has been poor my whole life. So you learn what the earth can give you. <laughs> but your son is... My son is a homeless nomad who no longer brings in income for carpentry. <laughs> and you're smiling about it. I'm smiling because he is doing what he was born to do. And maybe mm. sometimes that means we will be hungry for a few days. But at least his time has come. If his time has come, why doesn't he just bring Mary back? It doesn't work that way. And how does it work? Sometimes he is as much a mystery to me as he is to you. <laughs> Berries. 
poison. <laughs> we lived in Egypt when Jesus was a boy. One of their gods was called Thoth, whom they believed they could compel to grant their wishes if they performed rituals. It's not like that with our God. Why would it be with Jesus? Nothing good can come from Mary disappearing like this. Do you know that? She was already upset about something, even before the possessed man came into camp. Mm. Simon and Matthew are competent searchers. They do not like each other. They'll have to work together. She could be dead or dying in a ditch somewhere. Why would Jesus use her pain to unite two men who are annoyed by each other? We do not know that she's in danger. She's a woman alone. She's either in a savage wilderness or a depraved <sighs> town patrolled by Romans. Prema. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. Ooh. But we trust in the name Adonai, our God. I want to be a teacher like that. That was an interesting saying. I want to be able to write my thoughts. You will. Not if she doesn't come back. We can't fix anything by worrying about it. <laughs> we can't fix anything by worrying about it. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> lavender. I think I will, actually. Can you eat lavender? <laughs> Nine, for sure. Nine is too much. I came in here with a single shackle to my name, and now look at this pile, huh? And how did you get the first one, woman? Hmm? What did you do for it? Wouldn't you like to know? Hey, are we going to play or what? Get on with it. <laughs> Watch and learn, boys. Watch and learn. Hey! Ah, mother of a dog! <laughs> mother first of a dog. Time old. Yeah. <laughs> Another. Another. Ah, no sweeps on twos. That's a loose rule. Well, we're playing by. Right? We're not playing. We are done. Hey, you can't do that. I'm going to win my money back. Yeah, when? Now. I see. No, she was just slow playing us, everyone. He's actually a lion. <laughs> you want to win your money back? Seriously? Mm-hmm. It'll be behind the bar. Another. <laughs> Man. A woman should know her place. I suppose you're going to show me? Uh, what do we do when we are scared? We say the words. We say the words. <laughs> Okay, really quick pause on this one. What just happened is not an easy thing to do. Um, not, I'm not talking about just what, like Mary's character, but what Dallas has done here, which is get into her headspace, get into the headspace of a character to bring like flashbacks to, to you know, use cuts to focus in, focus in on her face, on her expression, cutting back to the gentleman who's upset, you know, cutting to when he wants to go over there and show her her place. And then another gentleman comes up and, and like sort of like defends her. And then she has a flashback of when she was a kid, you know, and what do we do when we're scared? It, it's very subtle, very subtly says that she's scared in the moment, but she's being very brave, right? Like she's being, um, I don't know if brave is, is the correct word because there's some something really stupid in what she's doing uh, because she can get herself killed. But there's this front of her being really brave and, and, and not afraid. 
but she's afraid. So what is that, Familia? How do we, when we mask some when we mask our our true emotion and we show uh, something that we're not actually um, feeling? Uh, I'm not sure if that question was clear enough, but <laughs> brazen, yes, okay, yes, defiant, yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. English is hard sometimes, but I thank you all so much for your for uh, for helping me with that. Yeah, it's. Uh, she, yeah, she is definitely, definitely tough. Where is it? Where did I see it? I saw somebody say, oh, yeah, she's tough and still, yeah, still scared. Fronting, yes. It makes me think of me before I was totally free. Yeah, like, so we're a bravado. Ooh, love that word. Courage, courageous, yeah. There's a difference between bravery and stupidity, right? That's why I said there's, like, she's being brave, but there's something stupid about what she's doing because she can get herself killed. And uh, it, she's playing a very dangerous game there, right? I don't know if stoic is the correct word because she's really, she really is afraid. It's not like she's not afraid, you know? And I think uh, if we looked at stoic, a stoic wouldn't behave that way. <laughs> um, definitely wouldn't be, be, behave that way. He'd be more uh, righteous in, in a way. Uh, Self-destructive is a, is, a, is a way, is a word, I'm sorry. She's, she's haunted, yeah. So there's a lot, a lot to see there. If, if uh, I may suggest when you all get a chance but you rewatch that and and see what you can pick up there because it was really brilliantly executed by by Dallas here and 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 of course the the um, the actors beautiful job all right here we go sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen nineteen servings. And there's 15 of us? 14, if Philip doesn't make it back to That's him. true. And 11 if Matthew and Simon don't find Mary. It's only a day's walk to Jerusalem. If Philip, Matthew, Simon, and Mary don't come back, we can split the remaining eight servings, but someone would still be left out. And what if the others do come back? We'll have nothing Maybe for them. Maybe Philip stayed an extra day to visit his brother Micah. Why are you so troubled about Philip? This... This is literally our last meal. These lentils. <laughs> we don't even have half a bait of, of flour or yeast. Hey man, Mary might find berries. He can make people walk. He can heal lepers. Why can't he make food appear out of thin air? <laughs> when I was with John, sometimes we would go for days without food. Other times, the person he baptized would give us money. And we would eat like kings for the day. It doesn't sound like much of a planner. We never thought about it. John doesn't believe in money. Doesn't believe in it? Are, are you seeing this? He says it's a man-made construct designed to assign value and take ownership of things that belong to God. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like the guy needs an accountant. Maybe we should send Matthew to him. That was interesting. But I know isn't the best time for jokes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I once thought about joining the Zealots. What? You never told me that. You never asked. <laughs> so? Why didn't you? This very thing. We have enough rules from Torah to follow as it is. 613. 613. <laughs> all these prayers we have to recite, all these things we can and cannot do, add a bunch of body exercises to that each morning. <laughs> I feel you on that, brother. <laughs> you know? Mm, to kill people. Yes. But rolling out of bed each morning to Ima's breakfast, mm -hmm. Going out on the boat with Abba <laughs> seemed pretty great when I thought about it. But now that he's with us, he's technically not a zealot anymore, right? I have this theory that for some people, like, like little James and Thaddeus over there, uh. they're called to follow our rabbi, and they just somehow know it is a better path than the one that they are on. Mm -hmm. And then there's him. Mm -hmm. Decades of training for one thing, it cannot just go away overnight. Why should More it go worried away? about Simon than him. <laughs> and we've had our moments too. 
Ah, yeah, sons of thunder. Hey, <laughs> what is Ima going to think? Sons of thunder. I don't know, maybe she'll be glad we got a title. <laughs> I wonder how Mary's doing. I just don't understand why Jesus would pair up Simon and Matthew to go and find him. <laughs> Matthew, it's like asking it's like a, a, a fox topic. and a fish to go and team up and do something productive. What? Because they could never work together. It's a saying. Nobody says that. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to say that now. <laughs> I actually don't understand most of this. Pieces here and there when good things happen, but the rest I'm just following. Oh man. I have a sinking feeling. It's going to take a long time to understand. <laughs> For us? For everyone. Ah, something important there. Okay, a couple of things. Why should he give up his discipline? Right? So decades he spent a, a couple of years practicing this routine to to punch a certain way, to kick a certain way, spinning, jumping in the air, and all that, and it's become a part of who he is. This is it's it's who he is now. Should he give that up now that he's following Christ? You know, be, uh, it reminds me of this uh, phrase that I saw a few weeks ago or a few days ago that said something like like uh, to the effect that. Um, a truly peaceful, like a true peaceful person is not, uh, no, that in order for you to truly be a peaceful person, you have to be, ex you have to be capable of extreme violence and then hold yourself, keep yourself from actually taking action on that violence. If you are nonviolent, then you're just harmless. You're not peaceful. You're harmless. Someone who's peaceful is, is capable of extreme violence and then holds himself back. And so, you know, how do we tie that? How do we tie that onto here? Shout out to those of you who just joined us for the very first time. Let us know if you're new to the channel um, or if you if this is your first time catching a live, let us know so we can greet you uh, properly. Um, let's continue. And then another thing that uh, that the gentleman said here, I forget his name. Sorry. Uh, lightning and thunder. <laughs> um, he mentioned that it, that it, this is something that's that's really difficult to understand but he mentions that he just follows right now. He's just, he's just following. It's all like nothing makes sense, but he's just following. And that reminds me of how like the channel started. I, I didn't know where this was heading. I didn't know that there would be 80,000 subscribers. I didn't know that I, I would be watching this story here live with 240 people, um, you know, from all around the world. I didn't know that that was coming. All I knew is that I was in a situation. I prayed about it and I asked the great spirit to get me out of that situation. I was being led to do something that I hadn't done before, a reaction channel. And all I could do was press play. I mean, press record and that's it. It was press record. Everything else would just trust that everything, that all the pieces were going to fall, even though I didn't see all the pieces. And then they fell into what this beautiful thing called La Familia now. Um, the same thing is happening with the with now there's been another change in, in here in her home. And I was wanting to to do something to sort of help the help the house and wanted to create like the guitar lessons. And they, they still are happening. But then then in prayer the other day, I got this this call, another three, 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 another call to do it for free online and that God would take care of the rest. And here we are just trusting that God is going to put all the pieces together. Um, it's scary. It is definitely a scary thing because you're thinking, you, you know, why am I going to go down this path when it's, I don't know what the outcome is. And I guess that's the, that's the, that's the point, right? You don't know where you're going. You just got to really fully trust and, and well, it, it, it can be scary sometimes, but we know the pieces fit. So here we go. Let's, let's continue. How many of you, by the way, are following in that way? You're not sure where where this is all heading, where your life is going. I know, trust like this. fully. I make my bed deep in the depths. You are here. <laughs> Stay behind me. <laughs> oh, no. 
Round four, shoot. Round four, shoot. Place your bets. Keep it civil over there, Hebrew dogs. She would, yes. Excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you seen a woman with long, dark hair? <laughs> she, she may be distraught. Are you friends of Lilith? No. It sounds like Lilith. <laughs> that witch took me for everything I have at Knucklebones. Miss Mary. <laughs> you know where she is now? She can't have gone too far. We'll cover more ground if we split. We're not doing that. We can meet at the stables. Didn't she learn anything in there? Mary can obviously take care of herself. You can't. Oh my. What if you were cut off from Jesus by something in your past? Wouldn't you want help getting back to him as soon as possible? Oh. Okay. We All split right. up. North, east, south, west. Huh? I go north. Boys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. I gotta, I gotta pause this really quickly because I just made an observation. So we have Matthew, who's very practical. He's all thinking, emotions shut down. Um, it's not practical to, to feel something, to, to act out on your emotions is not practical. He's very practical, all mental. Then you have someone like Simon. He's, I wouldn't say that he's all emotional and not mental because he's, he's smart and he, he definitely reasons and, and plans and thinks things through, but he's very emotional. Like he's, he's, when he's angry, he just gives into his anger. Right. So he's, he's easily taken by his emotions. So we have two, two characters, one representing the mind, the other representing the heart. And if, if, if I'm seeing this correctly, Jesus is in all his, in all his wisdom paired the two so that they can learn to, to get together. This is sort of like a symbolic or, or an archetype for the human, the human being that your mind and your heart need to find a way of working together in order for you to find what you're looking for. So here we go. I thought I was dreaming you. Can you walk? I'm not going anywhere. We have to go back. No, I can't. Come on, Mary. He told us to come for no. you. No. <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. One more, one more observation. I'm sorry. One more quick observation here. Mary was with Christ, and, and, and she was safe in the group, right? As long as she stayed in the group. She was afraid of the Romans. And rather than staying where it was safe, she went to where she was afraid. She went straight to the people she was afraid of. Um, probably, I, I don't know, I imagine maybe to hide amongst them, maybe to like hide in plain sight, if you will. Uh, maybe she was too exposed um, outside, of, outside of the city, outside of the, of the people. Um, I just, I just find that interesting that instead of getting away to safety, she's, she's just went deeper into, into her old life lifestyle. Right. So, um, yeah, she went back to her co old coping mechanism, uh, coping methods. Yeah. Uh, I, I find that really, really interesting. Okay. He go. already fixed me once. <laughs> and I broke again. And I broke again. I can't face him. I'm a bad person, Mary. Mm. Matthew. No. My whole life. 
all through me. Mm. Oh, Faith. I do have faith in him. Just not in me. Oh. I'm learning more about Torah and God because of you. <laughs> I'm studying harder because you are such a great student. Remember when we were at Zebedee's and they lowered that man after breaking Zeb's roof? <laughs> we did that together and they got to meet Jesus because of your care for them and your good ideas. Rama is beginning to read and write because of you. <laughs> he saved you to do all these things. <laughs> The walls. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Where's your hungry Can you get some water, please? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay, what's going on with Simon here? I'll find some water. So all you're telling me is that he told somebody... Okay, pause, 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 pause. She said she had faith in him. She doesn't have faith in herself. How many of you out there are feeling this? It's very, uh, we got a hand over here, I think. No, oh. <laughs> We got a hand over here. Um, how many of you have felt this before? Where you feel like maybe you're not worthy of following Christ because you think that your past is so messed up that there's no, there's no way that he would look for you or want you in his presence. That maybe, maybe something you did um, is is going to be your reckoning um, that maybe something you said or something you did to another person or something that you stole or pretty much anything from your past is makes you unworthy of being in, just being in his presence. Forget forget going into heaven or forget all of that other stuff like that. That just that makes you unworthy. Anybody? Uh, me very often. Yeah, this is very common. I, I like I like what they're doing here with with Mary's character because she's very relatable um, on so many levels. I think they're all very relatable, but but with Mary specifically, you know, you you have a character here who is looking at herself. She is comparing herself. She is seeing herself as broken, as broken. I, I think. That is one of the biggest dilemmas that we face as human beings is seeing ourselves as broken and then needing something to be fixed. Whereas maybe we're more like, um, I don't know much about computers and maybe David Wilman can help us out here a little bit, but um, we're more like fragmented. You know, we have parts that are misplaced, things that aren't that like fear that shouldn't be where it is that, um, oh, what was it the other day that I said? I was listening to a song or something and or we were watching a show or a movie and it said, I don't know where to place my feelings or I don't know where to oh, place. Oh, um, it was the girl, right? She had asked him, where do you place all that pain? Oh, yeah. Where yeah. Somebody was looking at, yes. Yeah, someone was looking at somebody's past and said like, wow, you've been through a lot. Like, where do you store all that pain? Where do you play? Where do you put? Where do you know how to put? Where do you put all that pain? Where do you put all that pain? Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was an interesting way of phrasing it because people see like a pain as something you feel not something that that has its place and every emotion has its place she's misplacing her emotions she's putting self-doubt before anything before her faith she's not she she doesn't see herself following uh, following christ which uh which is interesting because if christ see, if jesus sees you as worthy of following him and all you need to do is leave your past and you're behind or leave the behind in your past or whatever <laughs> right i am quoting lion king uh, i quote it yeah timon and, uh, timon and pumba shout out to timon and pumba uh <laughs> and you know all you need to do is put your 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 past behind you and then follow isn't he a better judge of that than you are than you are to look at yourself and say, I'm not worthy of following him. If he's saying you are, and all you need to do is put your past behind you, 
and you're seeing, you're saying, I'm not worthy because of my past. You're putting your past as a priority to following Christ. When you, when you say, I'm not worthy, I'm not able to, uh, who am I to argue with God exactly? Um, when you say, no, I, I can't follow Christ because, you know, I, I, I'm an alcoholic or, you know what, um, I'm, a, I'm a very angry person. I, tr I mistreated my spouse or I mistreated my children or, you know what, like I, I, I slack off at work or I steal from work or I steal from my neighbors or from my family or, you know, from I steal from my mother to go and do this, do drugs or whatever, the, whatever excuse it is, because it's all really an excuse. You're saying that what that your past is more important than your future. And it's, it's an interesting thing because in order for you to secure that future, the only sacrifice that you have to do is sacrifice your past. And, and to a certain degree, sacrifice, sacrifice the present as well. And your, and your future will be secured. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, there's, that could be a whole Ted talk, but <laughs> we're going to continue with the, with the chat. I just thought it was very interesting that she's just so stuck to her past. She's like, I, he fixed me once. Oh, he didn't say he fixed it. He freed you. And she said, oh, well, and then I failed. I, and then I bro I'm broken again. No, you're not. I, I mean, I don't see it that way. I don't know. Uh, do you all see it dif differently? Is it wrong to, to say that no one's broken? We're just, we're just misplaced, fragmented, misunderstood. Maybe we misunderstand the world. Maybe we, maybe we misunderstand our experiences and then we see that we're broken. Maybe we're told that we're stupid or that we're, or that we're too dumb to, to, to do something or that we're, we're not good enough for something. And so we bought into what somebody else told us about ourselves. And then we believe other people's ideas that were imposed on us versus what God says about you. What does God say about you? Mm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted. That's, that's one of the things that I'm really conflicted about Christianity is that we look to God and say, and, and we look at the father as this person who's very angry, very disappointed at you. And he has this wrath that he's ready to, to, to lay on you. And I, I just don't see that. I, I just don't see that at all. But you know, I'm trying my best to understand that. I'm trying my best to, to learn and see, see what the Bible says about it. But there's something that just doesn't, it doesn't ring true. And, and it's bothersome because some people are saying, don't, don't filter your experiences through the Bible, but filter your Bible through the experience. No, don't filter the Bible through your experiences, but filter your experiences through the Bible. I'm not, I'm not sure about all that. But anyway, let's continue with the story. Beautiful story here. Carry his mat on Shabbat. And invokes the title son of man from the prophet Daniel. Yeah, many have. And maybe something happened at yeah. Capernaum, but you're not certain it was the same person. I am certain. Right. And your second witness? Uh, my colleague Yusuf. Was not at the pool, and neither were you. I was there. I'm sorry, but this case is very thin. President Shimon does not preoccupy himself with minutia. Minutia? If minutia. I may be so bold. Which violations of God's immutable law does President Shimon deem worthy of his attention? You're not listening, Yanni. Just like you haven't in the past. That is why you still hold a low station. I would like to know as well. If Shabbat violations are not worthy of Shimon's time, what is? Of 613 commandments. There are some which, when pitted against one another under certain circumstances, create pain for our people who are already suffering. The law of Adonai is perfect, reviving the soul. Let us return to the matter of witnesses. In the Torah, the testimony of how many witnesses is required to judiciously establish a fact? Hmm? Two. And if a husband dies and his wife is the only one to witness his death, what does it make her? A widow? <laughs> a an abandoned woman because there was not a second witness to his death. And if she remarries? It makes her an adulterer and her children illegitimate. Well, can you not see the cruelty of that? These are the laws that Shimon, like his father Hillel, is seeking to reform. 
his care is for women, for widows, for uh, the, 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 uh, the undervalued, for the vulnerable. Yours seems to be about people carrying mats on Shabbat. Blasphemy is not harmless. Dunash, <laughs> think of the political value. I'm only wow. telling you that Shimon is extremely focused. He will not expend energy on this case. Shalom. Sin. Interesting. Very demanding very, someone to violate Shabbat in addition to blasphemy. President Shimon would call that a thin case. Nash was totally dismissive. Now he is arrogant because he believes he's the final word. He thinks there's no consequence in talking down to us. It's hopeless. No. It's just getting started. Mm. Now we go to the other side, the rigid one. Shemai. I was hoping to create more chaos by working through Shimon, but perhaps Shemai will respond to our stories with such fury, this will work better anyway. Once, during the Feast of Tabernacle, Shemai's daughter gave birth to a son, Shmuel. He climbed up onto the roof of the chamber where she and the boy lay and Thor opened a hole in the plaster just to make it a sukkah. Yes, and his philosophies have weight in the Sanhedrin, which helps. But what if he finds out we saw President Shimon first? Not what if. We spell it out for him. Shammai and Shimon are philosophical rivals. Here we have a matter of law that President Shimon doesn't have time for. It's a perfect issue for Shammai. Wow. Shimon will have no explanation as to why he didn't take this seriously. Why does it take all this? Interesting, to say the least. Okay, pause really quickly. Familia, let's test out our emotional intelligence here. What do we think Mary is feeling? Ah, this is unfair because some of you are, I have already seen this, but in this moment, um, Mary is walking back to the camp. What do you think is going on in her head? What do you think she's feeling? What do you think is the most dominant feeling here that she's feeling? What do you think, Erika? Fear? Fear. Yeah, fear, scare, shame, right? Embarrassed. Embarrassed? So, I guess shame. Yeah, shame. All right, yeah. We got a lot of people saying shame here. Oh, shame, guilt, guilt and shame. shame. Yeah, good, guilt. Oh, shame. Okay. All right. So, here we go. Catholic, oh, what is it? Not good enough. Yeah. Unworthy. Not good enough, unworthy. Uh, what's our troll? Hey. Um, embarrassed, yeah, embarrassed, unworthy, dropping in to say, hey, hey, <laughs> ashamed of herself and scared. I feel like I'm relating a lot to Mary in this episode. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's let's see what what happens. Somebody said, oh, Matt, Matt said, uh, pause and grab your Kleenex. I have I have tissue paper. Uh, nearby. Okay, so she's excited. They're all relieved. Kevin, you're alive. <laughs> she covers her head. What happened? Philip returned with news. John the Baptizer was taken into custody. Mm -hmm. In the Herod's most heavily blockaded prison. High security. I guess it was pretty bad. They were off. They hurt him. Hey. Does Jesus know? Mm -hmm. Has Andrew heard? Just tell me he's going. No, he's not going to be okay. Do you need anything? Where is he? In his tent. Should I wait? No. I will take it to him. Mm. Isn't that how it always feels when you have to face something challenging? 
after having messed up. It's not you. There's quite a lot going on right now. So it's good to have you back. I don't know what to say. I don't require much. <laughs> I'm... Yes. I'm so ashamed. You redeemed me and I just threw it all away. Well, that's not much of a redemption if it can be lost in a day, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I owe you everything. But I just don't think I can do it. Do what? <laughs> Live up to it. Oh man, Repay something you. big here. How could I leave? How could I go back to the place I was? And I didn't even... I didn't even come back on my own. They had to come get me. Hmm. I just can't live up to it. Well, that's true. <laughs> but you don't have to. You don't have to. I just to. want your heart. The father just wants your heart. Give us that, which you already have. And the rest will come in time. Did you really think that you'd never struggle or sin again? I know how painful that moment was for you. I shouldn't. Someday. But not here. I'm just so sorry. Look up. <laughs> I can't. You can. Look at me. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> it's over. Okay, pa pause. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I guess I brought these for you. For but, me. Yeah. Questions. Questions. Serious, serious questions. Not questions for, not questions for the mind. Not questions for the heart. Questions for the spirit. the spirit in you and the spirit that you are. And the question here is, is was Dallas Jenkins oversimplifying this? Is he making Jesus look too good? Is he making Jesus look too compassionate? Is he making him look too forgiving is he making them seem too understanding is this in, in, in any way unbiblical is this something that 
Dallas intended to to use as a way to to have people like Christ more, or is this Jesus? Was this Jesus understanding, compassionate? He threw in a little bit of humor there. Think of, think of the worst thing that you think you've done to hurt another person. Not just another person. Maybe you have something that you've done that really hurts, hurts God. If that, if that is even possible, that God could be hurt in all his wisdom and all his power, that there's something that you could do that would hurt him. And think about that thing that you that you did that maybe you you even find it difficult to forgive yourself. You did it. It was you. And you can't forgive yourself for it. And put that put that thing right before Jesus at his feet. Do you see him turning you away? Do you see him telling you that before he forgives you, you have to do something else? You have to bring him something else. You have to give up your house or your car or a portion of your income or your firstborn or anything like that made it very, very clear in this little segment here. It wants one thing, one thing, one thing that you have that is that you do have. Just once one thing. give up your heart there's something important here and we can have this discussion at another time but there's something about the heart that is the center of all action the center of all that you feel the center of all that you are of course your mind as well right like it wants your 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 mind but the mind is something else the mind filters the mind decides and makes sense of things helps you make sense of things but the heart the heart is special the heart is the core of what you are and all he said is he wanted just this he wanted he wanted mary's heart that's it not asking for anything else Keep, keeps it very simple but leave it to a human being to say nah it can't be that easy you also have to do this you also have to do that you have to say this 10,000 times you have to you know kneel and and crawl on your knees all the way to the altar you have to you know take off your shirt and beat yourself you have to you know you have to do so much too much Imagine that thing that you just imagined just now that was the worst thing you've ever done, the most harmful thing you've ever done that, that probably just really hit God hard in the heart. And then he looks at you and says, I forgive you. I forgive you. No, these are not just words. These are not just something that like, this isn't an idea for giving someone like that. I forgive you and maybe I'll get over it. No, it's done. It, that's it, right? Isn't that something you said just, just then? That's it. I forgive you. Now, there's something that's to be, oh, it's over. There's something to be expected. Oh, yeah, she, yeah thank you, Matt, for, for reminding me. Asked her to look up. 
what, what, what is, what is, when you feel shame, what is your, your physiology like? What is your body like? Shoulders, shoulders bent over, facing down. What's your breathing like? You're probably holding your breath, tension in your throat because you want to say something, but you don't know what to say. Your heart heavy, pressure in your chest, your legs shaking, going into probably going into fight or flight mode, more likely flight mode for her or, or, or freeze. And he says, look up, look up, look at me. Because he wants your attention. He wants you to know that he's not just saying these words, but that he forgives you. He forgives you. It's forgiven and it's over, but you still have a responsibility you have a responsibility. He says it's over. But as he said, like, did you really expect not to go, not to sin ever again? Right? But you have a responsibility. What is that responsibility? You've been, you've been forgiven for that thing. For everything you've done, it's all now made right. To him, with him and with the Father. What is your responsibility now? Now that you've been forgiven for that thing, what is what is left to do or to not do to be more accurate? Mm, beautiful, great answer. So here we go. We got Roxana says, your responsibility is to believe it. Believe it, right? You're to cling to Jesus, right? Take up your cross and follow, right? Right? Run back to God with when you sin. Do not sit in a pity party pity party. Look up and behold love, behold redemption, behold salvation. The name of Jesus means salvation. Keep your eyes. That's it right there. Keep your eyes on Jesus. She saw something from her past. She walked away from Jesus. Her past called to her, and she answered. And Jesus called back, and she answered, thankfully, right? To do your best, to follow him. There's a lot of things that are, that are implied when, it comes, when we say follow him, right? John says to love. Your responsibility is to follow, love him. I love people. Keep it simple, familia. Let's keep it really simple here. Very, very simple. Keep your eyes focused on him. Okay? I know, and I'm not wanting to step on anyone's toes or to tell to 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 override or overlook anything that you're being taught on church. Go go to church, you know, interact with people that are like-minded. Uh, we, we have the Discord server, the uh, the prayer server prayer server that's there for you to interact with other people i'm not saying don't go to church don't read the bible i'm not saying any of that do all of that but remember that that the mind wants to complicate things and the heart wants to complicate things keep it simple live in the spirit be the spirit don't be this, don't be the mind. Don't be the things that the mind is made of with all its likes and dislikes and identities and, and hats, many hats that it wears. My, my father hat, my brother hat, my you know, uncle hat, my son hat, my boyfriend hat, my all of these, all of these different hats that I wear, YouTuber hat, and guitarist hat, teacher, uh, instructor hat, all of these different hats. None of that is what I am. What I am is what God says that I am, not what the world says that I am. And I am certainly not my profession or my skills or my, my titles. I'm not that. I am what God says that I am. And some of you just, some of you need to quiet the mind and just enough to hear God tell you what you are. 
Some of you are letting the mind lead and say, well, read this and it'll tell you. Talk to this person and they will tell you who you are. And then you then you wonder why it hurts, why you still sin, why you still fall, why you still do the things that you do. Yeah, it says we are our, our own worst enemy. God knows before we do things. I forgot who said, but that your mind can be your friend or your foe. Choice is yours. It can work with you or work against you, but it's meant to be to work with you. That's what it's meant to do. But um, oh boy, I feel for Mary here. Okay, sorry, we're gonna continue. Um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot there. Okay, so we have someone crying here. A certain Herod says forever. Yeah, I think that's what life imprisonment means. They signed the declaration on the spot. In blood. We'll never see him again. We can break him out. I know some people. The zealots against Herod's army. That's a fight I'd pay to see. It's maximum security up there. That would make it more fun. No. No. You're not a part of that order anymore. You're a part of this one. Mm. We shouldn't limit our options, is my point. Now isn't the time for that. I'm afraid the situation is worse than you know. What could be worse? Never used to happen to me before I met you guys. I'm sorry to interrupt, Rabbi. It, it seems that there's a... Yes, let them in, Matthew. Rabbi, Thomas. I recognize there is a lot happening, and right now may not be a good time. What is it? We only have lentils left to eat for tonight's Shabbat dinner, and after that, we are completely out of food. Nothing left? I'm so sorry, Rabbi. Huh. Seems like something we should seek my father about. <laughs> Pray? Well, it is almost Shabbat, after all. I know of a synagogue nearby. The nearest settlement is Wadi Geld, and I don't think they give out free meals. Tell everyone we head out in the morning. It's just like a human being to say, but when God says to do something. But, I don't know, but what about this? But, God's probably like, like the only but I, I wanna hear or see is you're just moving, doing what I told you to do. <laughs> have you been to the synagogue, Rabbi? No, I have not, sir. Why this synagogue, Rabbi? It's not on any of our maps. That's a good question. Have you noticed that no matter where we go recently, we are more and more misunderstood? <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. It's a very complicated time. It grieves me that Mary was not welcomed at the synagogue in Jericho when she first arrived in distress. They turned her away? She didn't mention it. Come on, she's a woman. She didn't expect their help, but she needed it. Add to that John's arrest could say I'm feeling nostalgic for a small town. <laughs> no one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, wow. none of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord. What about a heretic? No Ammonite <laughs> or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, none of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever. Because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way. Shalom. Even to the 10th generation, none of them 
May you enter the assembly of the Lord. Uh oh. Forever. May I, may I see? Because they did not meet you with bread and with what? Excuse me. What are you doing? What is your name? Elam. Your friend Elam has a withered hand. Are you a healer? It is not lawful to heal on Sabbath. <laughs> Which one of you who has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath will not take hold of it and lift it who out? Who are you to speak to our congregation in such a of way? How much more value is this man than a Stop sheep? Stop this at once. Come here. Come stand here. It's OK. Hey, Lord, sit down. We don't know this person. He could be a shaman. Is it lawful Ooh. on Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life? or to kill. This affliction does not threaten his life. It does not even affect his health. <laughs> He's like, easy for you to say. <laughs> you don't have a withered hand. everything. <laughs> Wait! Come back! How dare you! Are they going to send the town guards after us? I think those guys are the town guards. All right, so for those of you who didn't <laughs> see, first he interrupted the reading simply by standing next to this guy with a paralyzed hand. <laughs> the, the priest. <laughs> What? Reaping or harvesting on Shabbat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been so hungry, I forgot what day it is. <laughs> I know that. You may. Uh oh Out of the way! You have made a mockery of our little synagogue and of Torah. You will tell us your name, your lineage, your... Uh-oh. First you, and now your disciples, are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Have you not read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He entered the house of God in the time of Ahimelech, the priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which was not lawful for him to eat but only for the priests. You would compare yourself to David. It was an emergency. <laughs> or have you not read in the law how on Shabbat the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath but are guiltless? That's for Levites. Are you a Levite? Ah, uh, they have priest answered Levites? everything. Listen carefully. Something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Ooh. Son of Man. Let's go. Wow. The title, Son of Man. Seems to upset a lot of people. <laughs> Why? 
tell you later. It's a big claim, that's why, right? Okay, cool. So here's here's what we got. Okay, so they were they didn't have they're running out of food, and he said, "We'll pray about it. Uh, we need to go to this little town, right?" He was he said, "I don't like the big towns because we we t- catch too much attention, and now I'm I'm just really hungry to to or nostalgic is the word he used. I'm nostalgic for a small town." He walks in. He interrupts the reading just by standing there, like like Simon pointed out. He sees someone who needs healing and he he interrupts the whole event with uh, by wanting to heal him. We have the leader of the church here calling him, you know, uh, calling him out on, on blasphemy, uh, you know, and now he chased them out of the church or kicked them out. Then he chased them and said, like, I demand to know your name. Right. And Jesus says something very interesting here. He said that this that Shabbat was made for man. No, that uh, not man. Yeah, Shabbat was made for man, not man for Shabbat. And that he being being who he is, he overrides all that, right? <laughs> He's like saying like, and I'm saying it's fine. Um, and they're like taken aback because they're like, you just said that he's the son of man. Like, what is going on here, right? Um, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, I like I like Jesus. I like this this what I'm seeing here. I don't think they 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 never taught us this in Catholic in the Catholic school when I was when I was growing. Up. I didn't go to Catholic school. I went to Catholic to Catholic church, but in Sunday school, they never taught us any of that. So it's it's great. <laughs> it's great to see him really just care for people. And he's like, look, I know that this is breaking the law, but guess what? My father makes made the whole universe, and so um, I think I think we're good here. <laughs> they probably won't even read it. This is what he killed, not Bethany or Jericho. They routinely forget to send us memoranda of liturgical changes for synagogue practice. And if we don't alert the Sanhedrin, then we sin by omission. He even had sin women following him. Three. Be sure to add that. If that doesn't catch their attention. But the Sanhedrin is distracted between Rome and the fractions and the zealots and the protest and Herod and Caesar. Their attention is diluted. Who would have dreamed? Someone claiming to be the son of man. The one who approaches the ancient of days. And Lord of the Sabbath. Walking into her tiny synagogue. What he killed? Jerusalem. David, Goliath. Maybe there is hope for the little. The overlooked. (laughs) Or maybe they write it off. As just another lunatic in the wilderness, spewing blasphemies and trying to get attention. And then it will end up at the bottom of a pile on some secretary's desk. We hmm. could go to Jatabata. There will be people of import among the protests. We could tell them as well. Yes. We will do both. Who knows? All we can do is fulfill our duty to report the facts. <laughs> Which are wrong. And pray. But... <laughs> For what? Justice. Mm. Oh, all right. So much working against him now, right? Um, let me turn the volume down. So much working against Jesus here. Um, he's doing a lot of good. He's spreading uh, the word that he's here and that he, and who he's here for. Uh, people don't, you know, the Pharisees are not fans of his because he's making big claims, big, big claims. But he's also doing these big uh, healings, right? Everywhere he goes, these big mir- miracles everywhere he goes. And still, he's being dismissed as false, as a uh, I think he said this man is a you don't know this man he could be a a shaman <laughs> right and like and all these all these things right um it's just it's just interesting to see how much they're pushing against him over over what because he's he's sort of mixing the pot here he's he's turning people who uh, t- 
to look at him versus to looking look at the person who's at, in the front of the altar to the ones that have studied you know the the, the law and who have uh, claimed themselves to be authorities of the law and of all things well but even authorities over God which is which has always been an interesting thing to me even as an atheist um, how so many people come across as like as um, claiming authority over all things God they know they're the ones that know and if and if you don't agree with them then you're wrong and you're and you know you're accused of blasphemy and you're accused of being a heretic and and all these stuff there's like very little respect even amongst like priests and pa pastors uh today is what was what as as an observation that was made uh, recently um so i love this episode a lot of great messages in this episode i'm not sure if our good friend uh, matt is still having uh the thursday's discussions but on on thursdays we were having a uh, discussion over this episode on discord so if you'd like to I share oh you just dropped the link I'll, I'll okay it, again, it hasn't it hasn't oh yeah it's up there okay cool so if you can just click on the link here download the app and join us for the discussion on thursdays i uh, wanted a quick reminder that next starting this upcoming monday next monday first we're going to do episode seven on monday excuse me episode seven on monday at 2 p.m same time and then join us at 6 p.m for free guitar lessons here on youtube yes you heard that right i'm going to be giving out free guitar lessons on youtube so if you've ever wanted to pick up a guitar and play if you've ever wanted to join your worship team or start a band or sing happy birthday to your grandmother on her on her birthday or maybe you want to do like a thing a special song for mother's day or who knows anything whatever you want if you've ever wanted to play pick up a guitar and play it then now's your here's your chance we're going to be doing free guitar lessons on youtube starting monday october uh 4th at 6 p.m and then we're going to continue every monday and thursday so the best thing that you can do to prepare is to grab your guitar if you if you know a little bit practice your exercises so you can your fingers can start getting uh, the hang of it and we're gonna have uh we're gonna learn Here's what you're going to expect. You're going to you're going to learn all your basic chords, every chord that you need. There's only 21 chords you're going to learn uh, to that are going to help you learn almost play any song out there. Almost every song out there has these these very basic chords. There, there are a couple of songs that have uh, a few extra chords, but I'm going to show you how to read the chart so you can figure out those chords and learn to play them and grow. My goal is to teach you all how to play the very basic um, uh, chords play a couple of songs and then teach yourself that you can, you won't need me as a, as your, uh, as an instructor, you could just pick up the guitar and learn any song you want by, by training your ear. So um, if you have a guitar, dust it off and join me next Monday. If you don't have a guitar, you still have a few days to, to purchase one. Um, so join us on, on Monday. There is an app that I've developed in the description down below. You'll see a link to that app where's my phone you'll see a link to that app and here's what we have this designed for you all when you open up the link when you open up the app you'll get to this main page you scroll up you click on click here to begin and it'll i want you all to click on that top link up here this first one that one and go through this uh, module here it's going to show you how to read the chart and if you learn this ahead of time, it'll make the the guitar lessons a lot smoother for you, a lot faster, a lot better. It'll show you how to read the chart. And then if you if you wanted to even, once you're done with that, you can click on on the major chords and start learning your major chords. You go to study and oh, you click on study and it'll show you all of your chords. All 21 chords are already on there. And also there's a, a test that you can take at the end to test your memory, to make sure that you've memorized the, the finger positions and all, and all that good stuff. And I'm really excited about this because we're going to make musicians all around the world. And the, what's in it, what, what I love about it is that my grandfather took time to teach me. Um, yes, that's right, Roxana. Um, my grandfather took time to teach me, and I am now going to share that with you all. 
when my grandfather taught me, I'm going to share that with you. And in a way, I love that idea because that means my grandfather's love and my grandfather's um, um, teachings are going to be spread out through the entire to the entire world, not just in my family, but it's it's a gift from my grandfather to you, and also a gift from the father um, to to me. But I'm going to give that to you. So join us, okay? Um, join us next Monday, 2 p.m. for 2 p.m. Pacific time for episode seven of of the chosen and then at 6 p.m for that guitar lesson right and i i want you to know erica already started her guitar lesson she she had her first yeah. lesson yesterday yeah. how are your fingers feeling they're not that numb anymore they're not that numb anymore <laughs> excellent I'm practice a little more today i, I asked her are, are your fingers numb she goes i don't know i can't feel them <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more because i think the guitar is just my hands are small. Like, you see, <laughs> like, awesome. they're like really tiny. So yeah, no, but you're, you're gonna get it. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna get it. <laughs> if anything, we'll teach you how to play ukulele. So, mm-hmm. so join us, okay? Join us for that. And for those of you who want private guitar lessons and want more of a one-on-one, those are still gonna be available. There will be a fee for that for for just for my time. But anybody wanting to make a donation for for that is is welcome to. Um, preferably through any of the like the Cash App. Um, apps versus on YouTube memberships um, because YouTube memberships take, takes a portion of that or YouTube takes a portion of that. Um, and I would rather they not, but um, it's not, you're not obligated. If you want to sponsor someone else's guitar lesson, you can do so as well. So, so this way, if anybody wants to pay for somebody else's guitar lessons, you can do that as well. Um, but again, it's not obligated and you all are welcome to join me and just watch even maybe it might be interesting, interesting to you. Maybe you'll see that I, you know, the way that it's taught, you want to pick up a guitar yourself or maybe, or maybe the opposite. Maybe you will find out that playing guitar is not for you and that's okay too. All right, Familia. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on this episode six. It was a wonderful episode. I'm going to take a look at it again, just to see what, what we've missed. And, um, and start new conversations, go over to our communities tab and answer the questions that we've been asking the, these last few weeks uh, for anybody interested in doing that. Okay. Um, sort of a paid forward. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, and then just want to let you all know that Erika and I will probably be going on another live later on today for a Q and A. So if anybody has any questions or anything like that, we're just going to take some questions and have a conversation with you all. All right. All right, Familia. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, Skinny Max, say hi to baby Aurelius for us. Um, um, Dori, say hello to Mamacita for us. Also, to today's also uh, Roxana's daughter Rebecca's birthday. Ah, happy birthday to Roxana's daughter Rebecca! Yeah. Happy birthday! We love you. <laughs> we love you so much. All right, grownups, thank you so much. And then on your way out, please. Um, will it be in the middle of the night? No, it'll probably be around six six o'clock. So in about maybe two and a half hours, two, two and a half hours or three hours, it'll be early on, so everybody can join. Um, yeah, th- thank you all so much for joining us. What hour, Erika, Leonardo Torres? Um, at about six o'clock. I think I think we're gonna be back on six. Nylon strings are a little more forgiving in the beginning. Yes, they are. Yeah, uh, metal strings will hurt your fingers. Nylon strings are a little bit uh, m- much much better, a much more better uh, choice. <laughs> um, cool. When should we speed the Q and A? Yeah, around six p.m. my time. So two and a half hours. In about two and a half hours here. All right. All right. Thank you all so much. Check out the app. Uh, I spend a lot of time on there. If you have any suggestions or any, um, if you run into any glitches or anything like that, please let me know and I'll fix it. All right. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, God bless. Peace.